Okay, so good morning everyone. For today, we're going to talk about obligations and contracts. So first, we define obligation. Article 1156 defines an obligation as a juridical necessity to do, to do, or not to do. Basically, you can be ka, or gagawa ka, or hindi mo gagawa. The essential requisites of an obligation. First is a passive subject. The person who has the duty to fulfill the obligation. This is sometimes called the debtor of the obligation. Active subject is the person who is entitled to demand the fulfillment of the obligation. Sometimes called the creditor or obligee. Object or prestation, the subject matter of the obligation. The one referring to the definition as to give, to do, or not to do. Juridical ties that binds the two parties to the obligation, such as it can be contracts or quasi contracts, delicts or quasi delicts. Those are juridical ties. So, example of an obligation A sold B a bread for 20 pesos. The passive subject here is A because she now has the obligation to deliver the bread to B. Active subject is B since he bought the bread from A. The object now here is the bread. The juridical tie is the contract of sale. So that is an example of an obligation. Sources of obligation, there are five. Law, contracts, quasi-contracts, delicts, and quasi delict We'll go over this one by one. Law. Basically, pretty much self-explanatory, there are laws that oblige us to do something or to give something, for example, the obligation to pay taxes and, of course, the obligation to follow traffic rules of the land transportation. These are laws that enforce on, on obligation on who it covers. Contract, it is the meeting of minds between two parties where one binds itself to deliver, to give, or to render service. We say contract, a form of contract in which the two parties do not have consent over the matter but is binding in courts. No, there are only two quasi contracts in our laws here in the Philippines. One is negotiorium gesture, it is the voluntary management of property of another without the knowledge or consent of the latter. So, a perfect example is written below a child was separated from his mother in the deck of the cruise ship. A. Found the child and fed him while waiting for the mother. The child was evidently found by the mother and she now has the obligation to reimburse expenses that A. Incurred. Question now is, if the mother did not reimburse the expenses that A. Incurred, can A. Sue the mother? Answer is yes. On the grounds of negotiating gesture, it is enforceable in the Philippine courts. Solution deputy is a juridical relation which is created when something is received when there is no right to demand it and it was unduly delivered by mistake. So very confusing yung definition but a very simple explanation is that pag sobra yung panukli ng driver sa'yo. For example, ang sukli mo lang dapat is 2 pesos but the driver gave you 10 pesos. Or an example is 5 pesos. Ang binigay sa'yo, uh, ang sukli mo dapat is 5 pesos but the driver gave you 10 pesos which is very common nowadays. You now have the obligation to give back the 5 pesos to the driver. So, what if hindi mo binigay? The driver can press charges against you on the grounds of solution in the So, those are the two ways I contact scenario. Next is delicts. So I hope that you won't be experiencing this. That, that, that these are the obligations that arise from criminal offenses. For example, a thief must return what he stole. Those are delicts. Galing sa mga criminal offenses siya. Quasi delicts is very broad. It is not a crime because the elements of the crime are not present but you are obliged to fulfill. One example is and damage to property. So Ace dog escaped from the house and mauled the sheep of his neighbor. B. 
A now has the obligation to pay for the damage that his dog incurred to B. So what if A will not pay the damages when B can, uh, can press criminal charges to B? Those are quasi delays. That is delay or moral. It is the failure to perform an obligation on time, which failure constitutes a breach of the obligation, a definition from Article 1169. There are three kinds of delay. Mora solvendi, a delay on the part of the debtor to fulfill his obligation. Number two, mora axipendi, a delay on the part of the creditor. to accept the performance of the obligation. Compensation more is a delay on both parties, which there is no actionable de default. So, of course, we have the requisites of delay. Number one is failure of the debtor to perform his obligation on the date agreed upon. So, pag hindi ka nag-perform or hindi mo binayaran on the specific date, nagkakaroon siya ng delay. Number two, demand by the creditor upon the debtor to comply with his obligation. Number three, failure of the debtor to comply with the debt. So, what if these are the requisites of delay? So, what if yung isa missing? So, so may siya pwede, for example, uh, failure of the debtor to perform his obligation, pero the next one is hindi naman nag-demand yung creditor, wala siyang delay technically. But if these three requisites are met, we now have a breach of contract that constitutes a delay or mora. So one factor for a delay that is very common is a fortuitous event. It is an event in which cannot be foreseen or which, though foreseen, is inevitable. There are two fortuitous events act of mind, like war or quarantine lockdowns, or act of God or force majeure, like storms, earthquakes, and other natural calamities. A general rule for for this event is that the debtor will not be liable from the loss or damage due to a fortuitous event. However, there are exceptions to the general rule. When the debtor is guilty of fraud, negligence, delay, or contravention of the tenor of the obligation. Basically, pag may pandaloko ng nangyayari, fortuitous event would not be uh, an argument for the case. When the debtor promised to deliver the same specific thing to two or more persons who do not have the same interest. The obligation to deliver a specific thing arises from a crime. When the thing is to be delivered is generic, so, meaning generic, uh, pag sinabi sa contract, you would deliver, deliver a pen. What pen? Basically, and dami brands ng pen, types of pen. You deliver a watch. What type of watch? Ball clock ba? Stopwatch ba? Or, uh, it must be specific to be, uh, to be a valid. No? Para ma-exempt ka due to offer to this event. When declared stipulations by the parties, when the breach of the obligation requires the assumption of risk. So, here are the modes of extinguishing the obligation. Of course, the obligation would be done or extinguished if the payment or the performance of the obligation had been made. Next is loss of the thing. If the thing perishes or goes out of commerce, meaning yung nagbibenta wala na, or disappears in such a way that existence is unknown or it can't be recovered, it can, quote and quote, can be a mode of extinguishing the obligation. Pero there are always exemptions on this rule. Condonation or remission of debt, no, the creditor will forgive the debtor, hindi na niya pagbabayarin si debtor. Confusion or merger of rights of the creditor and debtor. This is very rare because during uh, what it actually says is that uh, during the performance or creating the contract, the creditor is, is also the debtor, which is a very complicated process. 
Next is compensation. So, if na loss na loss of the thing, o nawala mo, mabayaran mo nila to offset the object. For example, the market value for the thing is 500, then the debtor would give 500 pesos to the creditor. Novation is a change and modification of the contract or the obligation. These are the modes of extinguishing the obligation. Next is contract, no? it is the meeting of minus between the two persons whereby one invites himself with respect to the other to give something or to render service. But I guess it's a contract where consent, this signifies that both parties have full knowledge and acceptance of the things and the cause. Object must be lawful and not against customs, morals, public order, and safety, costs, or consideration. The price of the object in the form of money or equipment. These are the requisites of the contract. So, kung wala yung isa, hindi pwedeng maging copy yung contract. Characteristics of contracts. Obligatory force. Force. You're obliged to do something if if you enter into a contract. So, may force talaga. A binding force. Autonomy of contracts. Now, parties involved are free to establish stipulations, clauses, terms, and conditions. So, both parties can write their own agreements, conditions, and clauses for the contract. Mutuality of contract. It means that the contract must bind both parties. So, kung ano yung sinabi lang sa contract na parties involved, sila lang yung pwede. First, it, it follows to the number four, relative to the contract, whether the parties involved are binded to the contract. So there are contracts that needed witnesses. You, know, you need to sign the document as a witness na nangyari yung contract ang yun, agreement na yun. So, the witnesses will not be involved in the contracts. The witnesses will be used, of course, as a witness in case like a problem sa contract ng dalawang parties or whoever parties are involved. Lastly, here are, here are my final notes to you guys. Now, there are no regulations for the process that will be written in the contract. Once signed, the court will enforce the contract to its full extent and the court will not have the power to change the process for both parties. So, ibig sabihin nyo, wala kasi nag-regulate or walang nagsasabi sa batas kung anong pwede at hindi pwede ilagay sa mga kontrata ninyo. Kayong dalawa lang yon ng both parties na yun. Once minirmahan mo yung kontrata, the court will have the full power of the contract to be enforced on both of the parties. Uh, and the court will not uh, will have no power to change the clauses of the contract because it is against our constitution. So again, read before you sign anything. So that will be our discussion for this morning. Next recorded lecture will be labor law. Thank you. Thank you.